very good evening everyone i welcome you all for today's webinar bim for manufacturing so what is meant by bim bim is nothing but building information model right so in, the, in this session we going to see what is meant by bim what are all the various uh, phases in the bim and we going to see as a manufacturer how can we find our place in the bim process and also we going to see what is meant by bim objects and what is the basic difference between cad versus bim objects and uh, how to create that bim objects using a inventor okay and finally how to uh, give uh, necessary metadata information to these bim objects and uh, how to convert those bim objects to a uh, revit op revit objects okay so this is what we going to see in the entire session and finally we going to see how to automate the entire process so in the nutshell we going to see like how to uh, collaborate inventor model to the revit model so this is what we going to see today and let's jump into the session so first let us see what is meant by bim so bim it clearly says building information modeling so basically it carries the information of a entire uh, building throughout its process so when i say its process the process it may goes from your concept design then it goes once the design is over then we need to construct that one so it is it is entering into our building stage next it is entering into a uh, operation stage okay so the information flows from your concept design till your demolition so each and every phase information will be added and it carries throughout your entire life cycle of your project okay so in a simple that's what your bim is there is so many uh, definition for a bim and somewhat confusing it is because there are different opinions about uh, what bim is and uh, how it works and why we need it okay so uh, let me uh, finally put it like this so bim is a process of creating a managing information of a construction project across the project life cycle uh, and the key output we get uh, from here is like building information so this information will be carried along throughout your process so finally uh, so this bim brings together all of the information uh, about every uh, you know about every component of a building in one place so this will uh, make it possible for you uh, know everyone uh, to access the information and uh, you know, finally what happens is like so once we get the necessary information that uh, that we could reduce the chance of mistakes okay and that's the overall advantage of a bim process since you no know, every process flows throughout the entire cycle that we can avoid you no know, costly mistakes which will impact the time as well as you no know, which will cost us more so those kind of uh, mistakes we can avoid into this bim process so bim is not a software it's a process okay so as a manufacturer um, adapting bim will allow you to place your products uh, directly in front of those leading on product selection for the build uh, securing your products place in the asset model okay. and uh, it goes beyond 2d and uh, no 3d drawing to create a virtual model using intelligent object so that's what uh the miss and what is meant for so in the next we will get into this one no before getting into what is meant by bim object let me put it like this so the objects so, you know we, we you seeing right it will uh, the same object let's say you can call it as a chair and so in each and every uh, stage it will looks different okay so it will carry its own information at each and every stage so the key is to find out which one is the bim content here so which one uh, could uh, which one uh, could able to deliver by the manufacturer and where is the manufacturing entry phase here so how do manufacturer provide those kind of information okay so that's what uh, this is about so finding out different phases is very important here and you know in which phase what type of model is needed and uh, where we need to provide necessary information because uh, let me put it like this if, if let's say because contractor doesn't need uh, the entire uh, you know bits and uh, 
pieces information of the manufacturers uh, sorry uh, bits and pieces of a entire model so you only needs to know who is the manufacturer uh, and what are the uh, specification because using that information you could able to uh, buy that from the vendor that's what the necessary information you need and architect he need information like where it will be get placed that is what information he is need but finally as a built one and we need to know all the uh, bits and pieces of entire object so that will be that will be coming in the last phase so in each and every stage uh, the concerned uh, uh, people involved in that process will be requiring will be uh, requiring the necessary information in that particular stage okay. so that's what about the bim content is so finding out so where we need what is a very important phase here so <clears throat> what is meant by uh, bim content so it provides your necessary data and the geometry to that particular phase okay and it also contains intelligent connection let's say if you take any uh, mep components uh, like chillers uh, uh, that's why components like uh, Age use and know uh, these things where it will also contain the MEP connection. So, as a BIM content, when you when you providing the BIM model uh, to a uh, to a client, it contains the necessary data and the size of that one, and also it, it should contain where the uh, ducting connections will come. And uh, and finally, we need that data should be uh, you no know, able to import into that respective uh, software okay let's say here uh, we going to see revit and the recognizable format inside the revit is dot rfp and the layout system is like dot rvt but as a family wants to export from the inventor to revit it will be get recognized as a dot rfp okay and we can see what is the necessary information that we need so we need to give information like uh, the size and the data so to identify what type of uh, component it is let's say here this chair and uh, is giving the necessary chair and what is the chair it is and who is a manufacturer and with the model and finally the level of development okay it's in 400 so what is meant by cad model versus beam object okay so <clears throat> as a manufacturer we uh, designing everything using a CAD software only, right? And uh, it contains all the necessary information to produce uh, that object, all bits and pieces of information we will be having. But when it goes as a BIMO object, it won't contain all the necessary information because BIMO object need not uh, to be have all the necessary information because only thing uh, it plays a role is like it, it needs to know where uh, it will get be installed and what are all the connections okay so most of the information from your cat will be get reduced to a bim object so let me show you something like this uh, so the in inventor that's my cad model where it will contains all my necessary information okay, you can see the fans fan blades and also it will give you uh, what are the dimension what is the material what is the weight and what is happening in inside no what are the piping connections so it will give you the all this information as a cad model so what um, but what happens when it moves as a bim object so when it moves as a bim object and you can see here this is your bim object where you can't see much information as we saw in CAD model. But what is the great uh, difference here? The size of the uh, no, the size of the product is greatly reduced. Okay, so let's say uh, the object size of this chiller uh, when it made originally. So that's my model the original file size is like 133 mp so once i convert that one to my bim object and my file size will be get reduced to see how many times it's like 320 kb okay because 
to load that much detailed object into your Revit is a uh, not a desired one because we don't need this amount of information. So before converting the CAD model to a BIM object, we will we will uh, reduce a uh, great amount of information and we will just show what is the thing that is necessary uh, when we going to convert that BIM object. Because the only thing we are necessary is I need to know what are all the piping connections and where it is getting installed and the necessary uh, metadata information. Let's say like what is the flow and uh, how many uh, tons of celerities and who is the manufacturer. So this beam object, this much of information only, you know, but I don't need to know uh, no entire bits and pieces of entire object, right? So that's your uh, difference between CAD model as well as the BIM object. So, so as we move on the uh, BIM process, we will call something as a level of development. So, so each and for each and uh, every phase, uh, we will have like LOD 100, LOD 200, LOD 300. So it, again, it may differ based on different process. So here, so in each and every phase, let's say for LOD 300, it carries only minor information. You can see only to use the description. So when it goes from LOD 100 to 200, where we will also give uh, the sizes. And uh, so in the documentation where we will provide only the uh, dimensions to the model. And when it goes from 300 to 400, that's where uh, the manufacturer information will come into the play. Okay, so this is where we providing the manufacturer. So as a manufacturer, we will get into somewhere in between LOD 300 to LOD 400. And some may say it's like LOD 350 and uh, some may say it's like LOD 400. And finally, at the uh, last phase, LOD 500 is the as built stage and it will contain all the necessary information for your uh, model. Okay, so basically this will communicate what information can be trusted for a particular level and what information can be uh, required at this particular level. Okay. Uh, so example, as I told you, on as a contractor, it doesn't need uh, information like, let's say, if you give uh, this LOD 500 to a contractor, it doesn't need this amount of information. So what he only needs is like, he needs only this manufacturer and this model number. So using this contractor can uh, procure those equipment from this vendor. So as an architect, you need to know only the description and let's say sometimes this dimension and where it will come to calculate the uh, space area. Okay. And LOD 400, it gives exactly who is the specific manufacturer and what is the model and exact size. So in each and every phase, your model will uh, uh, get different. And uh, so it will have its own set of uh, you know, information in each and every phase. So as I, as I told uh, BIM phases, so building phases, so it starts from your pre-design, we will call that one as LOD 100, and uh, then it, lose, it will go to schematic design and goes to design and development, where uh, what it will happen is like, uh, so it will go after design where they will do uh, you know, building analysis, and again, uh, the phases may come here, and finally it will go to the development, right? So once the design and development completed, then it en enters into the uh, construction stage where we need the construction document. So next it goes to the uh, LOD 400 and finally we will get as like as built models. Okay. So that so the need of the manufacturer is like LOD 350. Okay, where it carries necessary information of a manufacturing model. So let us take some example. Uh, here things. Okay, we have some something called things which is an LOD 300, uh, that will be very helpful for the architects, engineers, because it will give you what is the approximate size and shape and what is uh, use of this, uh, you know, what is the function of this thing. So it will necessarily carry supply water as well as the written water and where it will come. So that are the necessary information needed for this thing. But when it moves from that level to the next level, where it is the construction phase, it need the detailed Connections. Okay, so what are all the connections will come on how it will carry that water and accurate size and shape to finalize the phase of that entire 
building and also it needs to have coordinate connection so as i told you since it need the connection we need to provide the other connections to this sink so these things will be uh, coming in this lod 350 so as a manufacturer we find a place at this stage inside this bim process so we talked more about the bim process now let us get into how to create a bim objects okay so the steps for creating a bim object is like first we need to simplify uh, the uh, model so as i told you previously when we uh, doing the comparison between cad model as well as bim object so first we need to uh, simplify the objects okay because we can't carry too much information from our uh, you know from our manufacturing model to directly to a bim model so one, so we can provide only the necessary information so those kind of necessary information will be add add that information as the meta data so once we provide everything we could able to export that bim object as a recognizable one so in which software we going to uh, import so in this case we going to directly import into a revit the one advantage is like we can directly export from the inventory itself okay we don't need to import let's say we do uh, your inventor can directly export that model as a revit model okay we're not going to do anything like uh, converting to universal format and from universal format to again the uh, revit recognizable format so since all the skills are connected one uh, where uh, inventor can directly export its model to a revit so it can easily communicate with the revit model so first we'll start with the steps then we will see how to do that so first we'll see simplification of object the model simplification that's my original uh, cad model so once i uh, simplify that one and this is how my cad model will looks okay so this cad model which is containing like let's say at least 500 to 600 components right so my all all my you uh, know Contents and profiles like my bolts and nuts and my all my necessary information. So it will contain inside my original CAD file and also it carries the uh, huge, you know, uh, greater MB of file. The file size is very very big. We can't able to carry that one to our next phase. So we need we are we need to simplify that phase. So once we uh, simplify that one, what we get is like. we could able to uh, reduce 90 percentage of components inside that model and uh, we will be reducing like let's say we have like old futures fill up futures and chances and we could able to you know overcome that one because it will add more detail into the object we could able to reduce that detail features and also we could able to preserve the connection points okay so once we convert we used to give the connection points and where will be the piping will come and where will be the conductance will come so those things we will we could able to given preserve connection point and finally the great advantage here is like considerably we could able to reduce the file size right because if, let's say if we going to place 100 components with this size if you place all the 100 components we could not able to work as desired okay, so it's important to reduce the file size before getting into the uh, actual process so then what is the advantage uh then uh, in the process we also produce intellectual property of the man, uh, of the uh, model because if uh, if client thinks he don't want to disclose the uh, necessary details let's say he want don't want uh, to display what is happening inside of the object so we can also remove those ip uh, intellectual property models and we can provide that one as a you know overall layout okay so we can remove all the internal component and features so so this one we will call as a lod 500 as built model and when we convert that one to a manufacturing uh, you know construction phase we will call that one as a lod 350 model so this is what as a uh, manufacturers as a design engineers we need to convert these model to this construction model so the best practices because we going to convert this let's say iam file okay it's inventor files inventor assembly files we going to convert that one to dot rfa files
So because if our content is too big, we can't able to use that one inside my Revit. So and it's very difficult for them to use uh, the files which is in very, very big size. So first thing we need to reduce that size. So that's what it says, model simplification. So once we uh, done a necessary model simplification, our next step, what we going to do is like, we need to add some meta metadata to that uh, object. Okay, so we will call as a omni class information because uh, the objects, whatever we use in Revit, uh, it it will be in different classification. So if you are inventor user, you know uh, we will place our components inside the content center where it will be classified as a different one. Let's say for example, nuts and bolts, uh, fasteners and structural shapes like this. Uh, in the same manner, when we convert this one to a BIM object, it should be classified in a manner which should be easily recognizable uh, by different set of papers. Maybe contractor, he just want to see what is inside the uh, what is inside the uh, you know uh, HVAC equipment, and also you want to know what is inside the uh, fire fitting equipment. So those kind of things we could able to uh, you know provide necessary information using our meta data. So it basically carries what type of properties it is and what is the uh, you know, size who is a manufacturer. So everything we could able to feed inside my inventory itself. Once I feed, I could able to uh, give what is my uh, UCS, user coordinate system and where it has to sit. So then again, we can finally, we can author that building component and we can convert that one to a uh, Revit recognizable format. So basically Revit use three types of uh, files. Uh, family files um, that is the Revit will recognize three types of family files to import into uh, that software. One is like dot RFA, and next is like IFC files, and uh, and next is like ADSK format. Okay, all disk exchange format. So we could able to convert in all these uh, formats. We could ex able to export from our inventor to uh, ADSK IFC as well as out of a format so that again we don't need to import uh we not we don't need to change any changes in the revit so whatever changes we want to make we could able to do in uh inventor itself so it's very very easy so can, as i told you converting to bim format so once we make a inventor assembly which are very very uh, detailed one so we need to simplify that model uh, by removing all the necessary uh, you know, unwanted geometries and uh, the necessary information. So we could, uh, once we done that, we will convert, either we can also use that one as a parametric simplified part and we can be able to convert that one to a Revit recognizable format or we can directly uh, you know, simplify that one and we can convert to a Revit format. So as I told you, it will, uh, it will recognize our of your Revit family files, all of the exchange files and next one is the IFC files okay so this is the these are the steps uh, in uh, you know creating a bim object so now let us see how to do that in a software uh, that is my model uh, that's my chiller model where uh, it contains all my necessary uh, information of, let's say I'm having the fan, inside, I'm having the fan blades, and also I'm having my piping connection inside. So I'm having necessary piping connections inside to my chiller. So to convert this to a BIM object, I need to first reduce the num uh, information, right? So first let us see what is the file size of this entire object so these are me uh, all assembly files and part files the uh, file size is like 132 mb so let's see what we will get after converting that one to a bim object Right. To convert, so first we need to simplify this object. So 
so to do that we go something like simplification okay so in somewhere and somewhere if you not find this option it will be inside this one okay just it may be like somewhat you no know, hide it here just make sure you just check this option simplification okay um this shrink wrap added in 2018 version so previously we used to find only this uh, only create simplified part and these options okay uh to simplify this object there is uh, many procedures to do that and there are sorry no there are so many options to the, to do that so here we going to use some of the uh, options to simplify this object so i'm going to something like uh, simplify view okay so this is basically uh, no what it will do is like it will reduce unnecessary uh, object so where we don't need inside my rivet and uh, once you done that we can provide envelope okay so where it will looks exactly as a beam object and finally we can make it a create simplified part and uh, that's where your actual uh, size of your object will get reduced so let me click this simplified view and let me uh, select this object So once I select that, it is asking me to which one to include or exclude. Okay, so either you can include your object or you can exclude your object. Okay, so I want to select whatever the object I want to include. So remaining things, whatever I have not selected, everything will get excluded. Okay. So selecting include. So first, I want to include this case. Okay, I want to include this one, and I want to include, let's say, that fan. I don't want to include these blades. Okay. So next, we want is like I want these piping connections. That's it. So remaining uh, information did what is happening inside. We don't need to show because it carries. Uh, some IP information and uh, I don't want to uh, display that one uh, publicly. Okay, so this is what I want. Uh, see, here you have selected only one component. Let's say if you have uh, you have if you have done with something like pattern uh, with hundred number of components, what you can use is like you can go for select all occurrence. So once you select that component and you can see within a click everything will get selected. So, so that's it and just click OK and you can see all the information which is available inside everything is gone okay so in much way we have reduced our size so once you reduce that uh, you can see there is something like a new view is created in your model browser you will have something like simple view okay uh, so once you convert that Next step, what we need to do is like we need to uh, define a envelope. So just go to define envelope. First, let me uh, select this component. So once you select this component, and it will give you what is the size of envelope. Okay, it's basically it's like a rectangle which encloses your model. Okay, so you go to envelope let me select this object and i don't want to extend it and i want to go as it is so let me click that one okay and let me do envelope for these objects these objects uh, you can do envelope as a you uh, know rectangle and also as a cylindrical one so since it's this fan is in cylindrical shape let me give that one as a bounding cylinder and let me select that so once i select that and let me click OK. So that will be applied to all my cylinder. Okay. So I think we have reduced uh, more information and we have simplified the object, right? So once we done that, and finally what we have to do is like, we need to create a simplified part. Now this is the assembly. I don't want this entire assembly, okay? I want to simplify this part. Let me go for this create simplified Part. So what happens is like your IAM file will be converted as a IPT file. So go to create simplified part. So it is telling me whether it is a sheet metal part or standard part. It's my standard part. Let me select that. 
So once you select that, you can give where you want to save that part. Okay. So let me give that name as well. Still have new. And let me click OK. So it will convert uh, that assembly file as a part file. So automatically you will get an insert uh, as in a new browser. Okay. Right. So now first step we have first step we simplified the process. Okay. So first step we did, and next we will go for how to add a metadata to our BIM uh, model. Okay. Now we converted BIM model. Now we go, we let's see how to add the metadata. So to add the metadata, I'm going for you no know, tab environment tab where you will find uh, something called a BIM content. Just click that. So it will ask you to uh, select what type of connections that we need to use. So basically you'll have all types of MEP connections. Okay, maybe your cable tray connections and your contact connectors. And uh, you know, if you want to go for any uh, 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 you know, electrical connections, and if you want to show here what type of voltage carries, so those kind of things you can give an electrical connector. And you know, if, if you have any ducting connection for your chiller and for AU, those kind of things you can give in this duct connectors. And finally, you could able to also provide the pipe connectors. So basically, what this connectors will does is like it. Uh, where you will give uh, the uh, diameter of pipe and what is the flow of that uh, pipe it carries. Okay, so those kind of things we use to give an MEP connector. So let me uh, select here. I'm going to give piping connections here. So basically, we're going to give supply water as well as the return water connection. Okay, and the nice thing what it carries is like it carries uh, the information what. Revit will give you exactly okay. So, if you take any uh, Revit object where uh, no, if you take any AHU inside a Revit as a Revit model, but, uh, it will also carry the same information, whatever we're giving in inventor. Also, so here, whatever information will be uh, will be uh, giving it will be taken directly to the inventor. So first, we'll go for pipe connections. Here, you can see what type of uh, pipe connectors it is. Okay. So let me select first this one. So when I select it directly, take the diameter of that cross section. Okay. So once I select that, since it's a pipe connection, it will ask you to select what type of um, so what type of class, what type of system it is. Okay. So these things also you could able to find in your Revit. Uh, let me give that one as a hydraulic supply, and let me uh, change the so once I select a hydronic type, and you can see here all the necessary information to the piping connections it will carry. Okay, what your slope adjustment and what are all the losses method, and these things uh, you could able to find in your Revit model when you go for the uh, you know, property definitions. Okay. So what is the shape and what is the description and what is the flow? Everything it will carry with it. And if you think uh, no, you want to give uh, uh let's say once you select these piping inside your revit it, it has to carry let's say uh, 150 or some sizes here itself you can provide which type of which diameter of pipe it uh, should connect with this uh, connection so those kind of details also you can customize or if you want uh, you know the same type of uh, pipe that should be taken along with this uh, connection you can also give that okay so that's my pipe connector so let me uh, click that okay and let us give one more pipe connection here go to pipe connectors and let me select that one also sorry so let me give this one as a hydraulic return and i'm not going to give any information here and if you need you can give uh, the necessary information whatever you want So if you want to export this one as an uh, parameters, what you can do is you can directly click this one so that this set of information will be added as in parameters. So okay, if you want to customize those things, you can customize later. 
executed. So that's it. We have added the piping connections here. So in the same case, if you want to add any uh, ducting connection, we have not added any uh, ducting uh, thing here. So what you, you can also provide a basic sketch. Let us use that. Let's say. Uh, So we can give uh, like this. So here I want my ducting connection to be taken place. So let me uh, yes. So now we go to again your BIM content. Let us give the uh, duct connectors here. Okay. So go for duct connectors and select this size so automatically it will recognize your what is your width and height okay and what type of duct it is and we can give that information also so let's say let me give that one as the supply duct so it will carry that duct information so what is the connection type and what is the flow and everything so let me select that one as a written duct Okay, so yes, we have added the necessary uh, connection points. Okay, so that is one of the uh, thing we will do in the authorizing metadata. So once we add that, next we need to provide the UCS. Okay, so where we need to place our component. So it will take that one as a reference. So let me give the UCS uh, here. So let me take that as my UCS. So once I select that, it is asking me to specify my x-axis and let me give this as my x-axis and let it is asking me to select y-axis that's my y-axis okay. let's see that's my x and that is my y yes so that's my ucs you can define it uh so wherever you want basically it will take this ucs to place your component inside your a rivet okay so once you did that we need to author this building component so basically what we doing here is like we are authoring this one in which classification this beam object will come into play so those same kind of things we need to author before exporting to a building component okay. so go to this author building component so where we need to select the type of omni class information so let me select that uh, here i'm going for since my uh killer falls into hvac or you can also give uh, something like equipments and furnishings okay so where you will have all your mechanical equipments okay so but here i want to give inside my hvac component and let me select that uh or you can directly search here and it will give you the what type of chiller so so those kind of configuration will be applied to your model you can directly select the type of chiller it is click ok so and if you want that model property and what is the area and what is the volume everything so those kind of things also carry to the rivet model so once we did that just click ok Yes, we have added all the necessary information to our model. So once we did that, so next final step, we need to export. Okay, we need to convert that model. So we have done these two steps. We have simplified and we have added the metadata. And finally, we need to export that one to a BIM object. Right. So let's export that one to a BIM object. Go to export building components. So I'm giving that one as a chiller in new. Okay. Uh, let me do something like a chiller right. So once I no, once I give my name, 
it will ask you to select the format so as i told you we could able to uh, save these files in three formats one is the revit and next is the ifsc format and next is the adsk format uh, the files that you use in inventor all is your uh, rfa files okay so let me show you one thing So all your models are your RFP. So your Revit will directly recognize your RFP and ADSK files, and also you can bring your IFC files also. Okay. So let me select RFP file here, and let let us we have already given the name, and let me save it. So once we save that, it will process and uh, and it will finally it will give you a log which carries. Uh, the information uh, and also we can check whether we have given the uh, right information or not using that log okay so this is the first step uh, maybe this is the first option we could able to uh, convert our manufacturing models you no know, without uh, compromising on the size and we can directly convert to a revit file right so it may not carry, carry all your internal uh, details, but it will give you uh, the uh, uh, glimpse of what it can do and where it will uh, be carried and what type of connection it is. So once we did that, uh, so it will give you the report, and we can carry this report. And so let's see what report can what this report contains. As you see, uh, the report contains what are all the different connectors that we have given. Uh, we have given to pipe connectors and duct connectors, and what is the uh, family type and what is the component type. So it's easy for a no uh, contractors or uh, other people to uh, easily filter this component inside the uh, Revit. Okay. And uh, so parameters like this is the parameters we have given you know, for each and every connection points. So that's my information where it will carry all your sizes and everything. Okay. So the target, target file is like Revit.rfpa. So that's my uh, report. So let me uh, bring the component uh beam object into our revit model so let me go to this mechanical equipment and uh, so let me load the revit family so this is the one we have converted let me select this chiller revit and uh, so let me place it let's, let's rotate that So let me do that for 90 degrees. Yes, place that one. And now let me so drag it and let me place here. So, all right. Okay. So, yes, let us see what are the information it carries right now. So, once you select that chiller, you can see uh, that one here. We can go to edit type where you can see you know, whatever the dimensions that we have given so everything it carries from your inventor to your uh, revit right so your area and uh, uh, no even if you have given your name you no know, if you have designed so those kind of information also it will carry with you so if you want that if you want to change that connection diameters and those those kind of things also we could able to get it and if you want to add any other uh, additional parameters also we can add here so it's, it's nice right so we can directly give the necessary information in inventor itself and we can bring those things inside your revit okay and also we can give the uh, piping connections and uh, so once i select that it is telling me to give uh, my 
supply as well as a return. So I can directly select the type of piping uh, I can choose from here and I can directly give my piping connections using that model. Okay. Same way goes to your duct also. So once you select the component to where you can take the duct directly. Uh, so once you select the duct here, you can give your uh, what, is, what may be the duct size after uh, coming out of your ducting connections and what is your elevation. So those kind of things we can give uh, in the model itself. So directly it is taking the connection points. Even we don't need to create uh, anything additionally here. Okay. So it's very simple and easy. We can directly integrate with the rivet itself. Okay. So that's how you will do your first step where you will uh, simplify your model and you will add the connections and finally we'll export that one to a BIM object so which is recognizable in uh, Revit itself okay so I hope this is clear and uh, we'll just move on to next phase So once we uh, no, we have gone for the option one, and the option two is like automated uh, Revit families from the inventor. Okay. So what we do is like we will go through the same step whatever we did previously, but here what we add is like uh, we could able to customize our product. Okay. So not not only we doing the customization, we also allowing our customers to do that customization on his own so what he can do is like he could able to select uh let's say let me take this example we take this chiller he want to choose let's say 10 10 chiller okay and he want to choose 15 ton chiller so whatever type of chiller he choose and he will get it as a pipe he can also customize this chiller based on the appearance and based on the material uh, and based on different configuration okay so those configuration can be done in inventor so uh, that we will call as a configurator 360 so that is one step in between that we will call as a configurator 360 so those kind of automation also can be done possible in inside inventor okay so how to use this configurator 360 let's see that So, so basically like out of box for inventor clients uh, where we could able to configure with online cat and we can also able to integrate with your website okay so whatever changes that you make in uh, inventor it could directly able to update itself in the uh, configurator 360 uh, it will directly communicate with your website okay so where we could able to do the uh, you know whatever type of revisions and whatever additions we doing everything will be updated directly to your website so how this process will work let us see the workflow uh, basically uh, you know it's be done by using ilogic okay where we used to add the necessary parameters to that model so whatever we thinks that could able to customizable by the client those kind of details we will be providing in iLogic itself. Okay, so once we define the necessary parameters and materials and everything, we upload that one to a thing called configurator 360. So once we upload that one to a configurator 360, actually it's like a web-based tool. Okay, so uh, once we upload that one to web-based tool, where uh, you no know, your client can interact with that and he can uh, you know customize those objects and you can download uh, that object based on his own requirement okay so you can customize that one and you can download as a, either as an image or as a you know uh, step file or sample or whatever it may be so the so greatest advantage is like it allows your users or you no know, whoever maybe the vendor you can directly customize that object and you can directly download from your website and you can even use that model inside your Revit also let's see how it will work the first step is like as i told you we need to create the parameters using the ilogic okay so where we define uh, 
as many as many parameters like let's say size uh, maybe different uh, properties uh, let's say for based on the tonnage or based on the uh, colors or no those kind of details we can give in config uh, configuration so once we uh, did using your ilogic rules next we will go like we used to simplify that model so whatever we did you no know, previous workflow those uh, set of procedures will be followed where we used to remove the internal components and the ip things so once we did that and we next we need to uh, author the mep connectors so we uh, add we will be adding the necessary uh, ducting and as well as piping connections to your mep components so once we add that and we adding the you know bim metadata to your uh, product okay so all these information will be carried to your configurator basically so this information we have done previously so we will be adding one more uh, step here so once we did that we won't convert that one to rfi file we will uh, we will be taking that model and be uploading to something called configurator 360 here okay so once we upload to configurator 360 and it will directly embed that configurator in your uh, let's say that's my website will be directly embedded in my website okay as a model where my parameters whatever i did with uh, my oil logic it will be uh, not displayed here where i could able to customize based on my different set of sizes so that's as a designer that's our part so let's see how uh, it will be interacting with the customer point of view okay. so as a customer what i can uh, do is like i can go to that website okay i can choose what type of i can choose my product okay and i can also choose the various options that we have given while we designing based on the specification so once we did that and we could uh you no know, once we selected the components we could able to download as a image file also we can download that one as a rfp file you know everything we can do and what happens is like it will be shrink wrapped and it will be converted to a necessary file that you want to use in a revit okay so it's simple as like so even you're not uh, designing so where greater amount of work has been reduced and we are uh, allowing our customer to choose many options as whatever he likes okay. so whatever files that he can download it uh, he can open in directly dot files in the uh, rabbit itself okay where it won't have much detail so however we did with uh, uh, previous procedure where uh, most of the necessary uh, most of the internal details will be removed and we can use that one directly Revit. so finally uh, what is the advantage by going to this one is like where we know we don't need any uh, revit expertise okay so with the basic uh, inventor knowledge they itself can do that so we can so once we did that we can promote our products that done with configurator 360 so whatever changes that we make uh, you know we update in the content it will be added and changed in the on uh, in the website itself okay if you manufacture building equipment getting customers to design your product into their building information model is a sure way to help increase sales with bim content on demand using autodesk inventor and configurator 360 you can publish BIM ready content that can be configured by your customer to fit their needs. To create the rules that drive your design configurations, Inventor includes iLogic technology, which has been specifically designed to take the complexity out of the programming. Using parameters you've defined in the model and a huge library of code snippets, it's an easy drag and drop operation to get your configurator rules created. From there, you can simplify the model to remove unnecessary details such as fasteners, from the design prior to publishing the configurable model. You can then add metadata to the file that is useful to architects and construction professionals, such as system connection points and properties about your product. Once this is complete, you can send the design to Configurator 360. Parameters and rules you've defined in Inventor are identified, and you can select which options you want available for configuration. Once set up, your customers can access it anywhere, anytime through a web browser or mobile device. Once they've configured the model to their specification, it is further simplified and can be downloaded as a native Revit family or in the industry open standard IFC format, so it can be directly imported into their building information model. 
With Autodesk Inventor, you have access to a complete tool set that makes the task of exchanging data between two fundamentally different modeling systems simple. You protect your intellectual property and increase sales, and your customers can configure and download models of your product ready to be used in the building information model. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, and I hope I'm clear, right? Uh, so you can post your questions in the comment section and try to answer those queries. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thanks for attending today's session. And uh, we will get connected with upcoming sessions. Okay. Thank you.